Hello everyone, welcome to Pikeville History Moments, where we talk about the history and heritage of Pikeville, Kentucky and the surrounding area. Today, we're talking about Sally Nolan Baker, a local nurse and businesswoman who was named Queen of America. Sarah Sally Nolan's childhood home was Bexley, Georgia. Beginning at the age of 17, she worked her way through nursing school by picking cotton. Then, in 1923, she answered an advertisement from Consolidated Coal Company for nurses in Jenkins, Kentucky. Just a few months after arriving, she met a patient and railroad worker named Floyd Red Baker. The two were soon married. Pikeville Methodist Hospital opened the next year and Miss Baker was quickly recruited. Sally began her long career at what is today the Pikeville Medical Center on April 1st, 1925, and Floyd began working at a funeral home in Pikeville around the same time. In a 1982 article in the Appalachian News Express by Alice Kinder, Sally notes that hospitals were new to the area and people had a fear of entering them. She and other nurses on the staff would ride on horseback or on sleds out into the hollows to aid the sick and to educate them on the benefits of the new hospital. At the end of her shifts, Sally would often go into the mountains to take care of those who couldn't or wouldn't come into the hospital. If the care she could provide at the patient's home wasn't sufficient, she would arrange for transportation by whatever means necessary. At the same time, this could involve carrying patients across creeks and dragging them on sleds to roads, railroads, or the river. She was known to carry frail patients on her back down hillsides or other rough terrain when necessary. During a typhoid outbreak on Wolf Pit in 1924 and 25, she and the nurses treated over 100 patients in this manner. But her charity didn't end at treating the sick. G.C. Ratliff noted in the Louisville Courier Journal that the Bakers cared for many children beginning almost immediately after they were married. They had taken in at least three before their son Freddie was born 11 years into their marriage. They also arranged for homes for many more children. On one occasion, Miss Baker convinced the Rotary Club to sponsor a nine-year-old orphan girl's education at a boarding school in Philadelphia. Many years later, the girl, now grown with a family of her own, returned to Pikeville to speak to the Rotary Club about the virtues of the school and how it had changed her life. Sally arranged to place other children at the Mountain Mission School in Grundy, Virginia, or at a respected orphanage in Georgia. And it was known in the community that less fortunate children could go home with Freddie and be guaranteed a good meal at the baker's table. Times were different then, of course, and Miss Baker also seems to have operated as a one-woman adoption agency. Young women who felt that they couldn't raise their newborn baby would ask for her and she would find a home for the child. But Miss Baker deflected credit saying it was easy to find homes for newborns. She credited the people of the Big Sandy Valley, saying that everyone from the wealthiest merchant to the most hardworking miner chipped in whatever they could afford to make these things possible. She is quoted as saying, there aren't any greater, big-hearted, more hospitable people living than those of the Kentucky mountains. While doing all of this, she found time to be on the board of directors of the Pike County chapter of the Red Cross and to be active in the women's club, the Methodist Church, and the Eastern Stars. She also helped her husband run the funeral home that they now own. Following the 1957 flood, she spent her time organizing the distribution of food, water, and clothing despite the Baker Funeral Home having several feet of mud inside, and she moved six displaced families into the upstairs rooms. So, we've documented, at least in part, enough good deeds to demonstrate that Sally Nolan Baker was a fantastic nurse and even a better person. But how does that lead to a coronation as queen? Well, to explain it, we need to take a short detour to Hollywood.
There was a wildly popular radio show that began in 1945 called Queen for a Day. It would later also become an equally popular television show. The premise of the show was that host Jack Bailey would ask an audience of mostly women if they wanted to be queen for a day. Would you like to be queen for a day? Bailey would then interview several contestants. The women usually described recent financial or emotional turmoil they were experiencing in their lives. The audience then voted by applause and a winner was chosen. This was generally the women perceived to be in the most difficult circumstance. The chosen queen would receive a sable robe, a jeweled crown, and was seated on an impressive throne. Bailey would then describe the prizes the new queen had won that were intended to help her situation. Despite its popularity, there was some pushback from those who believed the show was exploiting these women. In response, Mutual Broadcasting System, the owners of the show, conceived of a contest to crown a Queen of America, who would not be an example of a woman needing charity, but rather would be someone who represented the best of America's character. The contest began in October of 1949 when 450 radio station managers and their sales staffs announced the contest and began asking the 50,000 women's groups in the United States for nominations. These groups represented nearly 23 million women. Around 15,000 women were nominated leading to 1,000 regional winners and five finalists. Among these nominations was a letter written by Pikeville High School teacher Pauline Ramsey on behalf of the Woman's Society for Christian Service. It outlined the nursing career and humanitarian activities of Sally Nolan Baker. Then on January 6, 1950, Sally appeared on the Queen for a Day program where Jack Bailey announced that she was the Queen of America. She was given the same royal garments as the show's usual winners, but instead of the normal prize package, she was awarded around $30,000 in prizes by the host and was handed tickets for a seven-week European tour. Upon her return to Pikeville, Sally was greeted by a crowd of nearly 4,000 people celebrating her victory, and January 9th was declared Sally Nolan Baker Day. About a week later, she was introduced on the floor of both the Kentucky House of Representatives and the Senate. She did not waste the opportunity using each occasion to give a speech advocating for bills related to health care and funeral care. A week later, she was in Washington, D.C., attending a luncheon held in her honor and hosted by Representative Carl D. Perkins. Mr. Perkins introduced the Bakers to both of Kentucky's senators several other House members, and to the Speaker of the House, Sam Rayburn. The couple then traveled to New York City from where they would depart for Europe. Originally, the trip was supposed to consist of a stay in England and France, but her nursing and social work background encouraged the Economic Cooperation Administration to sponsor the trip and she was extended an invitation from many of the Marshall Plan countries. The Marshall Plan was intended to help rebuild the war-ravaged nations of Europe. This sponsorship added stops in Denmark, Norway, Sweden, Holland, Italy, and Greece. In Sweden, Crown Princess Louise, who would become queen later that year, enjoyed Sally's company so completely that the visit went on for hours longer than anticipated. In Holland, her visit with the royal family included hot chocolate with that nation's queen, which they also served to the nearly 7,500 children being housed at the camp. While still in Holland, she appeared on a radio broadcast with Ambassador Eugenie Anderson, the first woman appointed to a diplomatic post of that level. Throughout her time in Europe, she inspected progress under the Marshall Plan, including visiting hospitals, public health projects, child welfare projects, and meeting with children's groups and women's groups. Perhaps the highlight for Miss Baker, though, was getting a chance to stand on Mars Hill in Athens, where St. Paul had preached nearly 2,000 years ago. 
When she returned to the States, she reported her findings to the Economic Cooperation Administration, saying that the people she met didn't want a handout, they only wanted a chance. She was also in demand as a speaker for some time, traveling to nearby states to talk of her experiences. When she retired in 1968, Mayor Hambly once again declared it Sally Nolan Baker Day. But of course, she continued helping others as long as she was able. During the interview preparing for that News Express article, Miss Kinder asked Sally about all the care she had given to those in need over the years. Miss Kinder reported that Sally thought for a moment and then said with a smile, Everywhere the Lord has sent me has been where I was needed, and I am grateful. We think it seems appropriate that our Queen of America, Sally Nolan Baker, gained her noble title through the strength of her noble deeds, and we are grateful for the impact she had on our area. Thank you for watching Pikeville History Moments. If you're watching this on YouTube, please hit like and subscribe. Or click on the link to our website at visitpikeville.com. If you have any stories about local heroes who have helped others in need in our community, we would love to hear them. Please comment on the video or email us at tourism at pikevilleky.gov.